So we did a YouTube show the other day on how often should you clean your toilet? And we had a lot of questions and comments that came in and I thought, hey, why don't we just jump in and answer those questions so we can carry on that collective conversation? All right, the first one comes from Deborah White. Thanks, Deborah, for the comment. She said, I always appreciate your cleaning advice. Thank you. I learned to use Comet from my mom. I'm kicking 73. So that 10 less environmentally harsh rating was good to hear. What are your thoughts about using Comet regularly when cleaning bathtubs and sinks? All right, that's a great question. And the answer is you can use Comet on sinks and tubs that are acrylic and porcelain and fiberglass. The key to using it is the scrub sponge that you use it, not necessarily the powdered cleanser. Comet does have a little bit of grit to it. It's not as fine a powder as, say, Barkeeper's Friend. But if you use the right sponge, which is going to be the non-scratch scrub sponge from Scotch-Brite, it's the blue one. Use the blue one only. We do not even send cleaners out with the yellow and green. The yellow and green is safe for the cooktop, which is that glass cooktop that has the cooked ring around it. It's a heavier-duty scrub power, and it will scratch if you're not 100% careful with the fiberglass tub. So we don't even use the yellow and green sponge on the tubs and the sinks, but we do use the blue one and it doesn't scratch. So you're good to go with Comet on your sinks and tubs. Alrighty, and the next question is from Eva Soshaki. She says, sounds great. I always thought it was a bit excessive to use caustic cleaners and to wipe down the whole toilet with a spray every single day for maintenance, as so many people suggest. All right, the reason that we don't use chemicals every single day is it's just not necessary. Now, imagine you were inside your kitchen and you were cooking a meal, for example, and you had sprayed down the entire cupboards and you wiped down the countertop and you prepped it in order to cook your meal. And now you're halfway through the meal and you've spilled a few little bits of this and that and you want to just wipe it up. So you grab a damp microfiber cloth and you just wipe it up. That's the same process that we're doing in the bathroom. So the toilet was already cleaned. It was cleaned with chemicals. Now, the next time we go in or the next morning, we're just going to take the brush and just brush around the ring. It's just like wiping the countertop off. It's just a simple maintenance activity that tidies up after ourselves. So it's not the real cleaning where we're bringing out the big chemicals. Okay, That'll happen once a week or once every other week, depending on when you do your real clean. But the little daily brush with the toilet brush, just pop it in the toilet and brush it, is going to keep all of the rings from building up inside your toilet. So it's just like wiping off the countertop. It's just an easy peasy maintenance clean. All righty. And the next question is from Pam M. She said, I just have a drop of my favorite dish soap in the toilet and I swish the toilet daily. I wash the rest of the toilet with my weekly cleaning schedule and right before any special time when having guests. Then my question to her was, where do you put that dish soap? Because most people, they're too lazy to stop what they're doing and go get dish soap or get cleanser, bring it back to the toilet and go through the whole process. Therefore, they don't do it or they're going to do it later or the next time they come in the bathroom. And that's where the rings build up is because they never actually get around to it. Well, she came back with several different answers and she was suggesting that on the back of the toilet, she has a little tray that has some tissues and stuff. And one of them has a little pump and in the pump, she has dish soap. And so she just puts a drop of dish soap in there, swishes it around, and that gives her the soap she feels she needs in order to keep the, the toilet ring at bay, which was awesome. So that was a great tip. Thank you, Pam M. All right. And the next question is from Susan Hildreth. She says, what do you recommend to spray on the outside of the toilet when you wipe it down? This is a great question. The one that we use as professionals is Otoban 32X. It is a bathroom cleaner and it is Earth Choice and Safer Choice certified. And so that's kind to the environment. It's biodegradable. But Otoban does have a disinfectant product that is a great all-purpose sprayer. It comes in a gallon, and we use the one-ounce pump spray. And the one-ounce pump spray is measured, and I will leave links in the show notes to this just in case you guys want to get one. But it is a measured ounce pump so that you put one ounce inside 32 ounces, and that creates your spray that you, you get for about, what, 45 cents per bottle that you can then use on all of your bathroom appliances, and it's safe for your bathroom. And it sanitizes up to 99.9%. So it's excellent for bathrooms and I highly recommend it. And during COVID, it's been readily available. So I'm super proud about that. All right, next question is from Ann Inmiss. And she says, I love your channel, even though I'm not a house cleaner by trade. I just wasn't taught how to clean as a child. Thank you. I want to stop for a second. And I want to say thank you to everybody that comes on the show that is not a house cleaner by trade, because a lot of kids were not taught how to clean houses. I know my husband wasn't. And so as an adult, it's something that he's had to learn and he's really good at it now, but it's something that he had to learn. And so don't beat yourself up if you didn't know how to clean as a kid, because it turns out that nobody knows how being born, right? Everybody has to learn at some point. 
So if you weren't taught as a kid, there's never a better time to learn than right now. It's a series of skills that you'll use for the rest of your life because as long as we live and we have a roof over our heads, we got to clean what's underneath it. And so this gives us an opportunity just to say, hey, I didn't learn it before. Never too late to learn now. And so I appreciate you showing up so that you can learn together as a group. So thank you very much. All right, we have time for one more question. This one is from DB. They say, we have the same bidet. Do you have any tips on cleaning around and behind the part hanging down in the toilet without disassembling it? The answer is yes. And by nature of the bidet, the bidet is designed to spray water. So by the nature of the bidet, it sprays itself and it's self-cleaning. So there never should be any backup or blockage um, to keep it from working. If there is for any reason, because it's made of a fiberglass as well, you can spray it with your all-purpose spray and just use your OXO deep cleaning brushes to make sure that there's nothing stuck in or around the bidet nozzle that comes out. And then with your paper towel, you can just gently dry it and just be very careful. If you're cleaning the toilet ring around the toilet, you have to be careful that you kind of go up and under the little nozzle that pops down. And that way you're able to get the ring around the back of it. You have to just be careful that you don't bring your brush forward because that way it might knock the, the nozzles off. So you do have to be careful, but it's perfectly easy to do. And like I said, it doesn't take any more time or anything. You just have to be aware that, oh, hey, I got to be a little bit more careful because here are the nozzles that are popping down from the bidet. All righty, that's it for today. Thank you for being part of this conversation. And until we meet again, leave the world a cleaner place than when you found it. Thank you.